everybody, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to talk about the three books I finished this past week during Booktubeathon, which didn't actually count for Booktubeathon. If you hear noise in the background, I apologize. It is a beautiful day, so I have windows and doors open and everybody's put their dogs outside, so you could probably hear the barking dog in the background. I hate that dog so much! Anyway, uh, these three books that I finished this past week, let's get straight into them. The first one is really easy to talk about. It is the second Sarah's Scribbles comic collection called Big Mushy Happy Lump by Sarah Anderson. I talked about the first collection last week called Adulthood is a Myth, and I'm just going to repeat myself here and say I love this. I love this second collection just as much as the first. It was all rereads for me again because I do follow the comic online and I've gone back and I've read the archives multiple times. Um, and, and once again, I love the comics because they're extremely relatable, especially there's like this um, arc which is about uh, dealing with anxiety, social anxiety, and how it becomes worse when you are not out pushing yourself to be around people. And there's this thing where she says she's trying to say yes to more things, which is exactly my internal mantra right now. I've been really pushing myself to say yes to things when I would normally have an immediate knee-jerk reaction to say no because that's scary or it makes me anxious. And uh, I've discovered myself that life is easier and my anxiety goes down, my stress levels go down when I am more continually exposed to like in-person social interactions. So this one was hard-hitting in that way. I didn't expect to relate that much so specifically to a couple of the comics, but yeah, it was great. And once again, I recommend this comic so much. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is my reread of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander, aka J.K. Rowling. I have seen the movie version of this when it came out. I went to see it with my sister-in-law who really loved it, and I enjoyed it too. Um, I just really honest moment here, and I apologize if I piss off a bunch of the Harry Potter files or whatever, but um, I am like super, super over all of the spin-off movies and books and materials from the Harry Potter universe. I read the original seven books and that's pretty much enough for me, and I get kind of annoyed when all this other stuff comes up because I don't care. I'm not into it that much. I love Harry Potter. I just don't love it as much as everyone else apparently. Anyway, I had originally read uh, Fantastic Beasts when it came out, god, like 16 years ago or whenever, and I didn't think much of it then. In fact, apparently when I imported all of my reading stuff into Goodreads, I rated it at two stars, and I have no idea why. Um, but I decided to listen to it again um, on audiobook because Eddie Redmayne narrates it and I really like his voice. So I thought this will be interesting. And you know what? It was okay. But I gotta be honest, it's kind of boring because it's literally a short encyclopedia. And perhaps not the best thing to listen to on audiobook because of that. I mean, I think encyclopedia and I think reference material, I'm not, it's, not, it's not a story. <laughs> It's a reference work. Um, however, it was short and cute, and I enjoyed Eddie Redman's narration quite a bit, so I just gave it three stars this time. It was good. Am I kind of annoyed there are supposed to be like four more Fantastic Beasts movies? Yes. Will I see most of them? Probably if Eddie Redmayne is in them. The last book I want to talk about here, I'm probably jumping in the gun on a little bit. The publisher would probably prefer that I wait a little bit closer to the publication date, but I'm just super jazzed about it. And that is Null States by Malka Older. This is the sequel to last year's Infomocracy, and the series is called The Sentinel Cycle, and it's basically a science fiction political thriller, and it's awesome. Um, it has to do with microdemocracy. The microdemocracy system is spreading around the world, and it's based on these things called Sentinels, which are like a hundred thousand people in a rough geographic area who vote, and then their Sentinel has its political party. And then every ten years, or maybe every five years, there is a supermajority election where, you know, a party wins across all the Sentinels, basically. 
The first book, Infomocracy, deals with a supermajority election that everyone's been preparing for, and somebody tries to rig the election. Null States picks up two years later, when the supermajority winner is setting up gaining power now, the dust has kind of settled on that situation, and it's, I think, mostly about micro-democracy being threatened from attacks from within as well as externally. A team from Information goes to this newly set up Sentinel in Darfur, and when they arrive, the newly elected leader of the Sentinel is assassinated, and the team stays there to investigate how he was assassinated and try to find out who did it. There's also their first real external threat where micro-democracy has to deal with war, with armed conflict for the first time. And so people are being sent to like this front, the Sentinels, which are kind of in this buffer zone um, between warring states. Um, and so a lot of this has to do with that null states concept, which are countries as, as we would recognize them that haven't adopted micro-democracy, places like China and Switzerland and how um, micro-democracy and sentinels feel about those states and what it's like to go to a place that doesn't have information and constant surveillance and everything. One of the things that I really noticed in Null States is that the series is written in the present tense, which, you know, that works, but it's not the common choice. And I think it works excellently in this series because it heightens the immediacy and the tension of the story. It's very fast paced, there's always something happening, and in Null States there is a larger cast of characters and there are so many POV shifts. It's like you'll have four or five in just one chapter, which can be dizzying and confusing, but once again I think it works here because it, this is a story about a lot of people working together in an information system globally. And so what one person is doing on one side of the planet affects what somebody else is doing on the other side of the planet. The only uh, problem for me, which is self-inflicted, is that I initially tried to read this in short pieces over a long period of time, and that is not a good way to read this. There is so much detail, so many things going on. You have to pay attention, and I think this needs to be read in large chunks, which is eventually what I did in about the second half, and it was just such a better read once I did that. So, highly recommended if you are into fast-paced science fiction, uh, more near future things that are like on our planet rather than out in space, and something that does politics really well. If you go look up Malka Older, you can see that she um, has a ton of experience in the topics that this series tackles, and she's been to these places around the world where she's set her story, like she's been in Darfur. So I love the international feel and that, that sense of realism that somebody who knows how this stuff works has turned it into fiction. It has that ring of truth about it. So yeah, once again, I'm gushing. I really, really enjoyed it. And that is it. Those are the three things I finished during Booktubeathon, which weren't actually for a book two with on. If you have read any of these or if you're interested in reading them, please let me know. Also, if you're from the future and you've read Null States and you want to talk about it, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again later. Bye.